Hi designers, I'm Vicky, if we haven't already met, and I work with the competition team here at World of Wearable Art. Once again, we're coming to you from WOW HQ down in Nelson, New Zealand, um, which is where the full-time WOW team are based. Uh, last year, we did a Q&A session for you guys with competition director Heather Palmer and competition manager Kat Sproul. And we thought in the lead up to Christmas, when we know most of you are in the depths of making and creating for next year, we would introduce you to more of the team um, who will hopefully be able to provide some insights and advice to help you on your journey. So today I have come to visit the wardrobe department and I'm joined here by wardrobe technician Julie Brawley and senior wardrobe technician Tanya Jacobs. Um, before we sat down today, I asked these guys to think about their top three tips for designers when they're making a garment. Um, so whether you're a first time entrant or a returning designer, hopefully there'll be something here to take away. So I'll introduce you guys a bit more. So Julie joined us, um, joined the WOW team full time back in June earlier this year. Um, hi Julie. Hi. <laughs> hi. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and, and how your journey with WOW has been so far? Yeah, sure. So I joined um, WOW in June. I uh, come from a background of um, doing bridal garments. Um, from there I went to theatre and worked in theatre for quite a few years. Uh, I've also been involved in the movie industry mm. and now I am working for WOW, um, which has yeah, been a great, great change. Yeah, and is, is super interesting as well because this isn't your first experience with WOW, is it? No, <laughs> um, um, yeah, no, happily enough. Um, I have been a WOW designer for the last 15 years. Um, having um, been successful, um, very successful, and no thank you very much. So all of the experiences. Yeah, 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 you've done everything with us. Yeah. Um, so some of Julie's garments you might remember if you've been with us long enough were Reflection on Time. That's right. Um, which won the Wow Factor Award, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Um, Sir Lace a Lot, which won the Man Unleashed section, and most recently Brighter Side of Pale from 2016. Um, right. which placed second in the Creative Excellence section. So um, I'm sure a lot of you will remember her work and is very exciting to have Julie on our side for, for a change. How have you found the transition? Oh, I love it. I this? totally yeah. love it. Um, being hands-on with the garments every day mm. is just a pure pleasure, mm. definitely. It must, have been, it must have been an interesting kind of experience as well, you know, being a designer that long and and um, not seeing kind of the behind the scenes work to now, there must have been a lot of unanswered questions that Definitely. have now come to light. Yeah. Definitely was, yeah. and it's in a really good way. Yeah. I'm totally impressed with mm. um, how the um, the garment is handled and um, treated all the mm. way through its life cycle. Yeah, yeah, and obviously it's great for us to have your perspective from from a designer's point of view as well. Yeah, which is awesome. I'm loving it. Yeah, good. And then Tanya also joined us earlier this year. So this is also your first season with Wow. Um, back in April, you came to us, and you also have quite an interesting history. <laughs> uh, yes, I guess I do. Um, and my background started in fashion, and then kind of moved into theatre and performance, and um, I spent quite a few years on the road with Cirque du Soleil, so in touring shows, managing the wardrobe departments there. Yeah, which is super cool. So how, obviously, um, hopefully most of you are familiar with Cirque du Soleil, um, how did you find it being on tour with a show compared to kind of just on one wow season, but compared to the wow show, what was the difference in those kind of jobs? Yeah, it's. I mean, the basic DNA is the same, putting mm. on a show, but the um, it's a little bit of a faster turnaround. Mm. Of course, we're touring Cirque shows, um, but it's it's actually quite nice to have it a little bit extended and mm. enjoy the the time that it takes to um, see everything put together mm. and then have the the two and a half weeks of performances. So it's it's nice to have a bit of a slower pace. Yeah, definitely. And I imagine there's a difference as well. Obviously, um, in a show like Cirque, there'll be there'll be multiples of the same costume. Mm. Um, but also, I again, I assume a, a, a costume department who are making these costumes, whilst what you're working with at WOW is, is individual works of art created by individual people. How has that kind of changed your I guess your kind of um, hands-on work with with the garments versus costumes. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, it's it's very different because instead of having one designer's kind of overall idea mm -hmm. about a show, you're working with um, multiple designers, <laughs> and it's it's trying to understand um, all of their inspiration mm -hmm. and um, their techniques and their materials 
to to support their garments. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's a lot wider range, yeah. and there's so many different techniques detail, too, yeah. to try and learn and mm. to understand. So that's why it's a it's a really interesting job. Yeah, today. <laughs> it's an interesting job for everyone, I yeah. think. Um, so obviously, I've introduced these guys. They're both part of the wardrobe technician team. Um, but for many people, you might not know what a wardrobe technician is. Um, so do you want to give us a basic kind of overview of your role, what, what you do on a daily basis, but also maybe what your year looks like, you know, through the competition and show seasons? Uh, definitely. The, the First off, the garment comes in um, to us for cataloguing. Um, they're, they're all unpacked um, and examined for any damage that may have happened through postage. Um, all of the components are listed um, and entered into our database. Um, we even look at what's in the repair kit because that becomes vital to us as technicians with your garment and care um, through the full process. Mm. Um, your boxes are flattened and stored um, and your garment is hung, well the ones that can be hung. Um, and they're all given a little bit of tender loving care before they get through to that first judging mm. process. So from the moment they arrive here in Nelson, which is where you obviously ship your garments to, um, it's these guys that are all hands on deck. You open the boxes, you check everything's in order, you check the lists, you check their addressing instructions, you check their repair kits, That's um, right. and then you catalogue all of them. Yeah. So you've got about, is it three, roughly we three to four weeks? Six staff, takes yeah. three weeks, so it's a huge Great. job. Right, yeah. Huge job for everybody. Yeah. But, um, and it's also so exciting, it's like Christmas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seeing what's coming in. Definitely. Yeah, so you guys get everything prepped for first judging, which obviously takes place over a two or three day period. Um, what's your role supporting the garments through that, that first judging? Uh, definitely things happen at first judging. That's where we notice whether um, there's things that it's, it doesn't fit the model. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe the designer has considered it in a mannequin in their lounge and mm. not on a moving mm -hmm. body. So yeah. a lot of a lot yeah. of things come up at that first journey. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where we do our first kind of um, strict health and safety checks, isn't it? Definitely. It's a big one. So before it goes through to the judges, every individual garment is checked for health and safety and we have a, a quite a strict criteria list. Um, obviously due to the nature of the show, um, there is going to be a person wearing your garment on stage. Um, so it's really important that we provide um, those checks before it goes into the judging room and that's what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. So then after first judging, obviously the selected garments are packed. Yep, that's right. And they're off on the next step. <laughs> yep, they're off to Wellington yeah. So for the show. So um, we take them over to the show and um, the the team, the Wellington team, um, technician team grows to about seven people. Oh, yeah. Um, and we also have a wardrobe, a supporting wardrobe team of six people as well, and then a, an additional dressing team. So yeah. there's, it's, it's, it kind of very much expands the, the amount of people um, looking after the garments. Mm. Um, so the first weekend when we get to Wellington is about uh, fitting, so the garments are fit to models, and then we have about seven weeks of rehearsals. So yeah. that's the first time that the models are seeing the garments and that um, the directors and designers of the show are seeing the garments on the models on the stage. And then we add lighting um, and the music and the rehearsals and the dancers. Mm. So it's all coming together. So that's it's quite a long period. The mm. models are often wearing the garments, the headpieces and the shoes as often as possible for mm. that period. So, um, so it's not just the show period that they're wearing the, the garments for, but a, right. a lot up to that so that they can get yeah. used to it and yeah. work on the choreography so that that can really be um, honed, mm. a honed skill by the time it comes to the show yeah. stage. That's right, and then we've got the um, second judging and then the production week and then the final judging. So there's quite a few intense yeah. periods there that we're, we're, we're getting the garments up to their best and yeah. um, having them you know, top to, to yeah. top condition for the judges. And then there's the show period, so that's also quite a big thing yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah, know, of so course. all hands on deck for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with kind of double shows some days and um, mm -hmm. not always a lot of downtime. So a lot of support and, and care, as you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously straight after show, they are packed up again <laughs> and they travel. So that's another thing to consider, isn't it? Again, the traveling that, that these garments have to do um, between Nelson and Wellington. Mm -hmm. And they're back here. Yep, back to Nelson, and um, they get started to be prepped for the gallery change, which um, really means. So when they get back to Nelson, they do go through a, rigor, a rigorous check again. Um, we clean everything that can possibly be cleaned. Um, 
a mannequin gets allocated to your garment, so mm. not the other way around. We make the mannequin fit your garment um, because obviously they're all very unique. Um, and then they installed into the um, Nelson Museum, which is uh, where um, your garment is examined up very close by a lot of people. <laughs> um, and this is and, a and real, pleasantly viewed. <laughs> exactly. And this is a um, a real a real um, advantage for mm. all of the designers because this is where your work is showcased in a large venue of like-minded. Um, yeah. Garment, so um, a real huge privilege yeah. to be part of that. Yeah, and as a lot of you will know as well, the museum's a great source of inspiration for fellow designers, you know, um, again, whether you're returning designers that are coming to see your kind of peers' work, um, or members of the public who have always wanted to try, your your work is, is definitely a source of inspiration when it's on display here. Um, so it's really important to, to kind of remember that full life cycle that it makes. Um, which kind of leads us on to our top tips. Um, so... As I've mentioned, you're obviously a lot of you will be in the middle of making and creating. So here are some things to consider straight from the wardrobe tech team. Um, and the first point that we're going to cover or touch upon is the construction of your garment and what to think about when, when you're really looking at that base construction. Yes, construction. <laughs> <laughs> right, so construction is, is um, it's a big one. That's kind of why we put it at the top of that top three. Mm. Um, so it's just kind of reminding you to think about the, the quality of the fabrics that, the, that you're using. Um, and, and also, you might have a very good idea about the, quality, the fabric that you want to use, but how does it attach or mm. go together with other fabrics? So are you using the right glue? Um, are you using the right... Um, uh, uh, attaching me methods, whether it's snaps or a zipper mm. or um, Velcro. So all those kind of things are, are quite important to, to think through fully before you actually commence the, the, gar the construction of the garment to know where you're going with it. Um, making sure that it's, it's fit for purpose because given the, the, the time, the duration that it has to be on stage and on the models and has to be worn, um, just making sure that it's going to last over that period mm. of time because uh, it's yeah, it's, it's quite important to the integrity of the garment to, mm. to make sure it can hold up. Yeah. Um, and, and if there's anything that you're not sure about, like if it's glues that you don't know which glue to use, it, you could always seek expert advice. Mm. You know, um, I think a lot of the people in uh, whether it's what in, in your hardware stores, they mm. they have some knowledge. There's knowledge out there on yeah. the designer forum as well. Yeah. So there's always um, somebody that's willing to give advice, and then you can make more of an educated decision about what you're choosing to use for your your materials that you're using for your garments. Mm. Um, yeah. So also uh, other things to consider a little bit are uh, like the inside of the garment. Mm. Um, because uh, both the inside and the outside of the garment are examined by the judges um, and if, if, if your garment has um, something that's that's um, not nice to, against your skin, the model's going to feel that, so that's going to affect how she's going to walk and perform on stage, yeah. so that's just something to consider. Yeah, definitely, and as, as Tanya's saying, um, quite rightly, at first judging, that that is exactly what the judges are looking for. Um, the Each individual garment is seen by the judges one at a time, and they are, they're looking at the construction, they're looking up close, they're looking at the detail, um, they're obviously hearing the inspiration and, and everything for the first time as well. Um, but the judges will ask the models questions, is it comfortable, how wearable is this, um, you know, is there anything sticking into you, or, you know, um, all these things. So, so construction definitely is, as you say, a very high priority when you're making your garment. Great. Um, point number two, top tip number two, is look at your technical components. So what do we mean by that? Okay, technical components, um, it kind of, it's alongside health and safety. So it's leading on from construction. It's kind of like your next level down. Um, it includes things like if you've got electrics in your garment, mm. are the wires um, well hidden, well away from the skin? Those mm. kind of small details are extremely important. Mm. Um, if you, again, if you don't know or you're not sure, ask, um, try and get advice from an electrician or somebody that has that expert advice that can mm. help you with those kind of things. Um, if it's uh, a, a garment that has um, uh, difficulties walking, like shoes that are very, very high or have bits added to them that are going to change the way that the model wa walks, is it is it going to be safe for the model to yeah. actually wear it? So. Yeah. Um, those kind of technical aspects of your garment are important to consider. 
because how they bring it to stage um, yeah. can affect its overall appearance on the stage. Yeah, as well. so yeah, those, absolutely. Those are yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think um, asking for help is is something that we're definitely taking a lot away from here, isn't it? Um, ask an expert who works in it, whether it's someone from your hardware store, whether you know someone that's an electrician, whether you want to post in the designer forum, you know, that's what it's there for. Um, ask, ask for help, ask for advice and, and support each other. But there's another another two really simple things are mm. breathability, like if oh, you've yeah. got a mask, can, yeah. the, can the model breathe in yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. um, and can and they not see? Just, yeah, and not just just breathing it at home, but when they're under lights and it's hot and they've been moving mm. um, around, you know, does that does that impact the breathability at all? Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. it's it's um, the models spend a couple of minutes on stage, but they also need to spend time getting into the garment mm. before they get to stage and walking up a ramp. So you know, it might be up to ten minutes that they're in the garment. Yeah, before, right. so it's not just a quick on off thing. It's, yes, it can be a quite a long time. Yeah, so. definitely. Great. And then our third and final point, um, potentially one of the most important points, is wear your own garment. <laughs> yeah, and if you can't wear your own garment, get somebody else yes. to wear it that's yeah. going to say to you, oh, my shoulder's hurt, yeah. or, you know, this is too small, mm. I can't breathe, I can't mm. move. Mm. Um, headpieces and shoes kind of go together. Right. So one can unbalance the other. Right. If your headpiece is falling off, you're going to probably fall off your Topple, shoes. Yeah. Um, so they need to be constructed yeah. and... Um, Tried and tested. Definitely. Yeah. And I have a funny little story to tell you about <laughs> that. Um, when I was making Solace a lot, I tried it on to find out, you know, how it um, felt mm. on the body. Can I move and all the rest of it? And I got stuck in my own garment <laughs> for... Over an hour, um, I couldn't get it off unless I dislocated my shoulders. And so I had to walk into the door jam and pull the whole gun off me backwards to get out of it. So I did do some reconstruction. Yeah, I, I right. put an opening in the front. Great. Took a lot of work, but it was yeah, worth the definitely result. Definitely worth it. Yeah. yeah. yeah so absolutely. definitely wear your garment and yeah. see how it feels. Yeah. Is anything sticking in? Again, can you see? Um, the weight is a big one. Yeah, right. Yeah. And to Tanya's point as well, obviously the, the length of time that someone's going to be wearing your garment is important to consider. You know, so if you are going to try the headpiece and shoes, try the headpiece and shoes as you're walking around the house and, and stay in it for a few minutes. Exactly. And, um, Not yeah. an hour. Not an hour. No, don't get stuck. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I guess as, as much as possible, although obviously not entirely possible, try and replicate the scenario of the show as well. You know, you're going to be under a spotlight, um, or the model's going to be under a spotlight. Um, there's going to be movement choreography, even if it isn't um, very kind of large choreography. Every garment mm -hmm. is, yeah, and heat, every garment is choreographed, but it's certainly moving around the stage. Mm -hmm. You know so that it goes to every pod. Up to 50 meters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so try that out. Try and replicate as many of these factors as possible um, because that's the best way to learn, as, <laughs> as we can see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the, um, when the, also the, the static display does have to be considered. Right. I think when it comes back to the museum, it is going to be examined up close. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, lots, lots to take away from that. Are there any kind of final points um, that we'd like to add? Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely good luck. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's a it is it's a, a fab job that you guys do and it's it's always really exciting to see what you bring um to the table. So yeah, best of luck. Um so as a reminder, obviously we are now in the 2020 season. Step one, your intention to enter is due on the 30th of March 2020. And if you're an international entrant, that is also your pre-selection deadline. So by the end of March next year. Um, you'll have to have your garment completed and photos and an optional video done for that and uploaded to your entry process online. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Uh, hopefully that was great for you guys too. If you do have any questions, always ask in the forum. We'll do our best to try and answer as much as possible. And we can't wait to see what you bring us next year. Thanks. Thank you.